Okay, so in this video, we want to introduce L'Hopital's rule in a very intuitive way. And to do so, let's start by reviewing a fundamental but simple limit. So the limit as x approaches 1 of x squared minus 1 over x cubed minus 1. Now as x approaches 1, it is clear that both numerator and denominator are approaching 0. So we have a 0 over 0 case. We have an interesting problem. As x gets closer and closer to 1, both the numerator and denominator of our fraction are approaching 0. So it's not clear how this ratio will balance out. But since we have two polynomials, and they are both 0 at x equals 1, we can use the factor or so-called zero theorem. Since one is a zero of each polynomial, and in each case, x minus one must be a factor of the polynomial. The first one is a difference of squares. So x minus one, x plus one. The second is a cubic polynomial. You can find the missing factor by long division. I leave this up to you. Divide x cubed minus 1 by x minus 1, and you will find the other factor to be x squared plus x plus 1. And then at this point, you say, okay, well, the ratio of x minus 1 over itself cancels to 1. And so the expression simplifies, <coughs> sorry, to x plus 1 over x squared plus x plus 1. And then as x approaches 1, the numerator approaches 2, the denominator approaches 1 plus 1 plus 1, 3, and so in the end the limit is simply 2 over 3. Now you might think this is the end of it, but any time you think you have fully understood an idea, a problem, it is always good to take a second look and try to look at the problem, at the solution, from a different angle. So, if we look at this step right here, going from here to here, how can we look at this differently? Right, so as x approaches 1, well, this term approaches 0, but this term approaches 1 plus 1, 2. So the closer x is to 1, the closer this is to 2. And on the denominator, same thing, as x approaches 1, well, this term approaches 0 but this term gets closer and closer to 3. So let's now approximate both of these functions. So we have, again, x squared minus 1 in its factored form. And let me write this first. So x plus 1 times x minus 1. Same thing for the cubic polynomial x cubed minus 1 is, I'll write the second factor first, times x minus 1. And as we've just said, the closer x is to 1, the closer this is to 2. So we can simplify this by an approximation. When x is very, very close to 1, this is about 2 times x minus 1. And when x is very, very close to 1, this is about 3 times x minus 1. And of course, this is if x is very close to 1. And it's better than just that, because the closer x is to 1, the better the approximation. So the closer 2 times x minus 1 is to x squared minus 1, and the closer 3 times x minus 1 is to x cubed minus 1. And when you look at this, what we have now is a, an approximation that is simpler than the original function. And when you look at the form of both of these approximations, these are lines, right? This is 2 times x minus 1, a line of slope 2. This is 3 times x minus 1, a line of slope 3. You say, aha, uh -huh, 2 over 3. And what does that make you think of, right? We're saying that these two functions, when x is very, very close to 1, 
are approximated very well by lines. So near a given value of x, what kinds of lines give very good approximations to functions? The answer, of course, is tangent lines. And again, I leave this up to you. So let's look at each function individually here. So let me squeeze in here the graph of x squared minus 1. At x equals 1. And I leave it up to you to check that if you ask what is the equation of the tangent line to x squared minus 1 at x equals 1, the answer is 2 times x minus 1. And this makes perfect sense, right? Because if you go back, we don't care about the global behavior of x squared minus 1. We only investigate this function when x is very, very close to 1. So we're focusing our attention to the function only around the point 1. And so it makes sense to say we know that if we focus our attention around a fixed value of x, the closer we take x to be 1, the closer the y values on the tangent line are to the y values on the function. And this is, of course, linear approximation. So what we have here is that, again, if we restate this, the values on the function are very, very close to the values on the tangent line. If you're away from 1, the values on the tangent line are further off from the values on the function. But the closer you move to 1, as x approaches 1, the closer the values on the tangent line are to the values on the function, and so the better this approximation. Again, if x is close to 1. And you can do the same thing with the second function, x cubed minus 1. So let's make again a quick sketch of this function as well. So it is again x cubed, but translated down by 1. So just imagine sketching x cubed with a vertical shift down by 1. So this is x cubed minus 1. And again, if you look at the tangent line to x cubed minus 1 at x equals 1, again, I leave this up to you, you can show that the equation of the tangent line is 3 times x minus 1. And same argument as before, the closer x is to 1, the closer the y values along the tangent line are to the y values on the function. Oops, let me squeeze in the 3. And again, the closer x is to 1, the better the approximation. So you see what we have here is a fundamental shift in perspective. We do not have to look at the global behavior of each function. We are only interested in the behavior of each function as x is getting closer and closer to 1. So you can essentially ignore the global graph and focus solely on the graph very close to the x value of 1. And close to this x value of 1, we can approximate each function very well by the equation of its tangent line. And the closer we are to 1, the better this approximation. So if we now use this heuristic of approximating each function by its tangent line at 1, let's see if we can give a different solution. Fundamentally the same but a fundamental shift in perspective, right? This was the result of factoring of polynomials of long division, an algebraic method that in no way involved tangent lines, the derivatives. Now we are putting aside long division in favor of saying close to 1, each function is very well approximated by its tangent line, 
the closer x is to 1, the closer is the approximation. So let's solve this problem one more time using the tangent line as approximations for each function and see if we get to the same conclusion. Solving the same problem, but now with a fundamental shift in our approach. The closer x is to 1, the closer the tangent line is to the function. So we can replace each function by its tangent line. The x minus 1 over itself cancels, and we are left with 2 over 3. And we can try to encapsulate what this might be in general. right? What did we end up with? We ended up with the answer being the derivative of the function on the numerator at 1. And the denominator is the derivative of the function on the denominator also at 1. Right? If you say, uh, let me call this, say, f of x. So x squared minus 1. And its derivative is 2x. For the cubic polynomial, let's call this function g of x. its derivative is 3x squared. And again, since we cared about the equation of the tangent line to each function at 1, well, the slope of this line is the derivative of the function at 1. So what's the derivative of f at 1? Well, it's 2 times 1, which is 2. And what's the derivative of the second function at 1? 3 times 1 squared, which is 3. So you see, in the end, all we end up with is the ratio of the respective derivatives of each function at 1, that is the slope of the tangent line. So it appears that, given a 0 over 0 case, the limit of the ratio of the two functions is quite simply the limit, or I should say forget the limit, is quite simply the ratio of the slopes of the respective tangent lines. So let's try and make a heuristic here. Is this a fluke? Maybe yes, maybe no. But let's try and make a conjecture. We had, initially, the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x over g of x. And the end result was the derivative of f at 1, which is 2, over the derivative of g at 1, which is 3. This is true for this special case, but can this idea be true in general? Right? That is the, uh, the question. As x approaches 1, in this case, f over g approached the ratio of the respective slopes of the tangent lines. Slope of the tangent line of the function at 1 over slope of the tangent line of the function at 1. And let's try and write this now in general. This will be the conjecture. And I will write this slightly more general using a limit. We will see uh, eventually why. Instead of using 1, let's use a for some other real number. In the argument, though, it was crucial that the case was 0 over 0. And that is because if each function is 0 at the point, then the tangent line um, will be 0 at that point, too. And so the ratio of the tangent lines will be the ratio of the respective slopes. If it wasn't 0, then we wouldn't get the ratio of the respective slopes. And now the guess is that the functions can be traded 
by their respective derivatives. That is the conjecture. Of course, as long as this limit exists, right? Because it is possible that the tangent lines could also have slopes of zero. And then you would still have here a zero over zero case, which may not be that useful. But that is here now our conjecture. And this conjecture is called L'Hopital's rule. Now, L'Hopital's rule is even more general than this. But for now, this seems plausible. If two functions shrink to zero as x approaches a given value, the ratio in the limit can be approximated well enough so that in the limit, the ratio of the respective functions will be in the limit again, the ratio of the respective slopes. In our next video, we will generalize this argument to give a heuristic as to why this might be true in general. But again, you see that What's interesting here is that we have a fundamental shift in the way we look at this problem. Initially, a purely algebraic solution in factoring the polynomials, canceling the factor that was responsible for the zero over zero case, namely x minus one, and we obtain an answer of two thirds. Very little geometry here, purely algebraic. But when we look at this problem again in a more geometric fashion, saying we don't really care about the global behavior of each function. What we really are interested in is the behavior of each function when x is very, very close to 1. And so to simplify the problem, close to 1, we can approximate each function by its tangent line. And the ratio of the tangent lines corresponds to the ratio of the respective slopes of each function at 1. And you might ask, okay, well, why is this useful? Very soon we will look at examples where factoring is off the table. We will not have a simple algebraic method to tackle a limit directly, but using the, the new limit of the ratio of the respective derivatives will provide enormously useful